King Lear King Lear a tragic play by William Shakespeare was penned around 1605 to 1606 and first published in 1608 as a quarto edition possibly based on the playwright's initial drafts The 1623 first folio differs notably from the quarto suggesting revisions for theatrical performance Here is the gist of the play Lear a king divides his realm between flattering daughters shunning the one who truly cares rejected lear descends into madness amid a storm his banished daughter returns with an army but they face defeat tragedy unfolds as lear his daughters and others meet their demise major characters of the play lear the king of britain earl of gloucester earl of kent later disguised as caius fool the lear's fool edgar Gloucester's first-born son, Edmund, Gloucester's illegitimate son, Goneril, Lear's eldest daughter, Regan, Lear's second daughter, Cordelia, Lear's youngest daughter, Duke of Albany, Goneril's husband, Duke of Cornwall, Regan's husband, gentleman, who attends Cordelia, Oswald, Goneril's loyal steward. king of france suitor and later husband to cordelia duke of burgundy suitor to cordelia old man the tenant of gloucester curin the courtier summary of the play act 1 king lear begins as the earl of gloucester introduces his illegitimate son edmund to the earl of kent lear king of britain enters with his court Now that he is an older man, Lear has decided to divide his kingdom between his three daughters. The division will depend on the quality of each princess's declaration of love for her father before the court. Goneril, Duchess of Albany, and Regan, Duchess of Cornwall, speak enthusiastically and earn their father's praise. But Cordelia, the youngest, says nothing because she cannot voice her deep love for Lear. misunderstanding his daughter lear disowns and banishes her from the kingdom he also banishes the earl of kent who had taken cordelia's side against the king this action by the king divides the kingdom both figuratively and literally cordelia's suitor the duke of burgundy rejects her once she is dowerless but the king of france values her honesty and takes her as his wife Lear's kingdom is shared between Goneril and Regan and their suitors the dukes of Albany and Cornwall respectively. Lear plans to alternate living with each of them. Act 2. Meanwhile, Edmund is determined to be recognized as the rightful son of Gloucester. By a trick, he persuades his father that his legitimate brother Edgar is plotting against Gloucester's life. Warned by Edmund that his life is in danger, Edgar flees and takes the disguise of a bedlam beggar. Edmund becomes a courtier to Goneril. Goneril meanwhile grows increasingly exasperated by the behavior of Lear's 100 companions who are upsetting her life at Albany's castle and she criticizes her father for it. Kent has returned from exile in disguise and wins a place as a servant to Lear. Kent accompanies Lear when he curses Goneril and leaves in a rage against her criticisms. Lear goes unannounced to live with Regan and Cornwall, who it turns out have gone out to visit Gloucester. When Lear arrives at Gloucester's house to find Regan, she spurns him and his followers, namely his devoted companion, the fool. Act 3. Despairing for his daughters and deeply regretting rejecting Cordelia, Lear goes mad at the height of a great storm. He and the fool run wild on the heath until Gloucester takes them into a hut for shelter. He then seeks the aid of Kent to get them away to the coast where Cordelia has landed with a French army to fight for her father against her sisters and their husbands. Gloucester then leaves and returns home. Meanwhile, Edmund is employed as a messenger between the sisters and is courted by each in turn. He persuades Cornwall that Gloucester, his father, is an enemy because he has been in touch with France and helped Lear 
when they are turned away by Regan. As punishment for Gloucester's seeming betrayal, Cornwall and Regan pluck out his eyes and abandon him. During the act of blinding Gloucester, a servant stabs Cornwall, who dies. But Regan continues to roll with Edmund's help. Act 4 Out in the storm, Lear finds shelter where Edgar has also taken refuge, still disguised as the beggar. Before separating the fool, the mad king and the disguised insane beggar become unlikely companions. Edgar finds Gloucester wandering the heath alone and in agony. Since his father is blind, Edgar leads a despairing man to the coast and helps him along the journey to come to an acceptance of his life. Gloucester later meets the maid Lear on Dower Beach near Cordelia's camp. With Ken's aid, Lear is rescued and reunited with Cordelia. Gloucester, now reunited with Edgar, dies quietly alone. Act 5 The French forces are overcome by Albany's army led by Edmund and Lear and Cordelia are captured. Goneril has already poisoned Regan in their jealous rivalry over Edmund's attention. Edgar, disguised now as a loyal knight, challenges Edmund to a duel and wounds him mortally. Seeing no way out, Goneril kills herself and the dying Edmund confesses his misdeeds and releases Cordelia. However, it is too late to save Cordelia from the hangman. Lear's heart breaks as he carries the body of his beloved youngest daughter in his arms and he dies. Albany and Edgar are left to reorganize the kingdom and resolve the civil wars. Major themes of the play This play delves into family dynamics, focusing on filial ingratitude. Goneril and Regan's cruelty contrast with Cordelia's love and loyalty despite mistreatment. Legitimate and illegitimate offsprings are explored, as well as good versus evil, with the older sister's wickedness against the youngest's saintliness. The other themes include old age, authority, pain, justice, and the timeless Shakespearean theme of appearance versus reality.